The basic premise of our work is that fructose was meant to be a survival factor. It was meant to help animals survive from pending crises. So it would, for example, it would disrupt the weight regulation so that you eat more and store more fat. It would create insulin resistance, which actually keeps, puts your glucose levels higher in your blood, which the brain then can use because some of the brain doesn't require insulin for, for uh, to, to use glucose. And so this can help an animal when it has very little food around uh, insulin resistance is a great thing if you're if you're in a situation where there's no food around. So fructose was meant to kind of prepare you for a crisis. And one of the things that fructose does is it stimulates foraging. So uh, unlike, uh, you know, so it induces all the features of metabolic syndrome that we know about, but it also stimulates foraging. When you give fructose to an animal, it will actually start, it'll get hungry, it will get thirsty, and it will start searching for food. It will increase its locomotor activity uh, for foraging, but when it's not foraging, it actually drops its energy. Its resting energy metabolism goes down, but it's uh, while it forages, it needs that energy to, to find the food. Uh, it creates impulsivity it, uh, because you have to be impulsive uh, you know, when you're searching for food, you can't, you know, be any place too long because you have to go into areas where there may be predators. So it, you have to be, you can't deliberate. You have to be looking around all the time. You have to be brave because you have to go into areas that are uh, potentially dangerous. And, and so th it's a behavioral response. Foraging is a behavioral response. Now, interestingly, um, it is driven by effects on the brain, just as you say. So when you give fructose to a human or to an animal, you can show changes in blood flow throughout the brain that are very opposite of what you see with glucose. So glucose tends to increase blood flow to the cortex, uh, which is, you know, the main part that is associated with thinking and self-control. But if you give fructose, the blood flow to the cortex drops, decreasing especially the areas of self-control. You don't want to have a lot of self-control if you're going to go into a place that's dangerous to get food. You want to get the food, so you have to uh, give up that self-control. Uh, you have to uh, stimulate foraging responses, like there's a, a area in the cingulate that really controls foraging, and, and you want to inhibit... Uh, the, the things associated with self-control and deliberation so that you can uh, can go in and be impulsive. And anyway, it's meant to be a survival mechanism and it's not meant to be on all the time. And the trouble is, is that when, when you're eating sugar and you have it at every meal and you don't hibernate like an animal, you keep eating, uh, you know, what happens is the the areas of the brain that are inhibited, the, where the blood flow goes down, those areas become diseased. And over time, um, you know, you kind of get locked in. What happens is the uh, reduction in blood flow uh, and nutrients affects the mitochondria, the areas that make energy and the energy levels in the er, these areas of the brain fall. So you you end up with a low ATP in your areas of self-control. Well, you know, over time, that can lead to a behavioral issues. So a, attention deficit disorder, for example, ADHD is associated with increased sugar intake. It's associated with increased uric acid levels. Uric acid is how sugar induces these changes in the, in the mitochondria. And when I say sugar, Sugar is glucose and fructose, but it's mainly the fructose driving it. But interestingly, glucose gets converted to fructose. And so glucose is not always safe. And when your blood glucose levels go up, it's stimulating insulin, which we know is bad, but it's also stimulating fructose, which we may be even worse, to be honest. And then anyway, so, so when you're eating sugar, uh, you know, it's associated with ADHD, uh, it stimulates this foraging response. 
Uh, it's already been pointed out in the literature how foraging and ADHD are overlapping. They, they basically are uh, part and one of the same. Uh, and so, yes, it makes you a little bit braver. Uh, you, you're sort of an adventurer because it's like a good response initially. But when you chronically activate it, you can't focus. You lose your ability to deliberate. Instead, you don't have the self-control. Uh, you become hyperactive. Uh, and so th it, it, it's really strongly linked. I've written papers where we've shown how fructose effects and, and what you see in brains of people with ADHD overlap, overlap. almost exactly. Um, and we've gone into it. You know, there are some arguments that maybe in the past there was a paper that said that sugar, uh, you know, doesn't reproducibly re, uh, re reproduce this in people, but be, and that artificial sugars do the same. But actually, what we're looking at is a chronic effect of sugar, not an acute bolus. The, it is true the acute bolus will stimulate a foraging acutely, but really, what's associated with ADHD is more of this kind of chronic, uh, in chronic effects. So anyway, uh, ADHD is okay. one. Another one is manic depression, uh, bipolar disorder. Uh, that's strongly associated with sugar intake. It's gone up dramatically with the increase in sugar. You give animals sugar, uh, they become hyperactive and, and jump around. And um, uh, same thing if you raise their uric acid. Fructose levels are high in the brains of people with bipolar disorder, both in the uh, cerebral spinal fluid as well as in the cortex. And it's another one where it really looks like it's uh, fructose. Chris Palmer, as you know, has really found that low energy levels may be important in behavioral disorders. And fructose is what lowers ATP in the brain. Uh, and, and that's the, the, the way you lower the ATP. So well, one of the main mechanisms, interestingly, is from eating high glycemic carbs. They don't contain fructose, but they raise your blood glucose. And a group at Yale showed that as soon as you raise blood glucose, fructose is being produced in the brain. In the brain. Um, and so it takes like a 45 minute delay. So if you do, if you give glucose acutely to a person, blood flow goes up to the brain, but it, over time, after about an hour, the glucose is being converted to fructose. So that's when you, you know, so that's why it sounds complicated, but yeah. But yeah, so, there's so a very strong link. Depression as well, kind of like chronic, people chronically on sugar, Drinking soft drinks in the morning when they wake up, these kind of habits can lead to uh, such suppression of the mitochondria and a fall in energy that it leads to a depression state.